Aloha! I am out at the track today with my coach. Um, I've been about a month off season now, so um, it's nice to see you. Nice I've to missed see you. you. Nice to see you. But not the torture. No, I'm just kidding. I, I totally have missed the torture. Um, but okay, so he's agreed to come out here with me today to discuss be beginner techniques for uh, or techniques for beginner sprinters. Um, so a lot of you have asked. Okay, I started sprinting, but I'm not really sure what my form should look like. So first, I'll just start off by any advice. What would be your basic advice to someone who is maybe of um, master's age, we would say like maybe in their late 30s or early 40s or above, who has never sprinted before and they're just beginning to sprint? Like what would be your, you know, like advice well, a lot for of starting? Them, for starting, I would say that uh, anybody that's coming out for the first first time is you got to know your body so you know we've talked about it before about you know uh, nutrition and and resistance training and stuff like that so you got to make sure that your body's ready for sprinting and but your basic sp sprinting should be the correct technique and so you want to really concentrate on technique 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 uh, when I when we, you and I first started it was about technique let's you know, make sure the arms are this way and the hips are that way. And then once you got it down, it was like, like that. So technique is one of the biggest things that you want to be able to get down correctly. And then from there, you're going to move to the next, to the next thing. Okay. So, um, uh, so as far as the foundation goes, I like what you're saying about like having the nutrition in place and then strength training. So uh, definitely maybe get on some strength training before they even come out to the track. Or um, sometimes I suggest people walk up a hill to start and then they start jogging up the hill and then they move to grass workouts before they even get on the track. So, exactly. Yeah, you know, so not rush it, right? Don't, don't rush to be a sprinter. You know, you have to have your base first before you can actually get on the track and you put on the spikes or whatever you're going to do you got to have that base training ahead of time so that way when you get onto the track it's a little more easier and you can actually handle it. Yeah, great advice. Okay, so now that we're past all that that uh, point and say I'm a beginner sprinter and I'm out at the track for my first day and uh, I did my dynamic warm up already. So uh, maybe I want to do a few maybe 50 meter runs, mm -hmm. uh, maybe 3 or 5 times 50 meters. Where should I I guess we could probably let, we'll back up from there uh, at the starting line. We'll go back to what drills should I be doing? What would be like three good drills to do for preparation? And we can always pause and show it too if yeah, we yeah. need to. Uh, one of the ones I, I like doing and uh, we've done for so many, so many years is uh, we do the high knees, we do the A skips and B skips because that really opens up the hips. It, it forces you to use your arms more uh, and it kind of gets you more um, into that running, that running phase or the running, uh, yeah, <laughs> the running, take three, <laughs> it gets, you, <laughs> Sorry, it gets you, it gets you into that, into that running form by just opening up uh, the shoulders and the hips. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you want, we can take a look at those three drills. All right. And then break and then da da da. Yeah, let's okay. do that. Okay, so uh, we're going to do our, the first drill, uh, first recommended drill, which is? We're going to do the, the high knees. So what we want to do here is we're bringing up that knee up with dorsiflexing of the foot, okay? And then as she goes, the hands are going to be up to about nose level and then behind the hips. So we want everything to be nice and full range of motion nice and relaxed okay easy breathing okay normally we'd probably do like maybe about 20 meters but we're just going to do about 10 meters but nice and relaxed Let's see okay. how you do it so good and an easy walk back and an easy walk back okay. and everything has to be nice and relaxed whatever you do for drills carries over to your actual workout so when if, whether you're doing 50s hundreds 200s 400s everything has to be la relaxed so it all starts right here in your warm-up okay next awesome. we're going to do is um, the a skips okay so the a skips same thing we're trying to keep the the foot dorsiflexed 
good full mm -hmm. range, range of motion. So dorsiflex, remember, is toe up. Toe up. And then arms are still full range of motion up to your nose or chin. And the back arm is going to be a little bit behind your butt. Okay. okay. And let's see how well All you right. do this. <laughs> okay. Good. So she's clawing the ground as if she has her spikes on. So, nice and relaxed. Yeah. Trying to hit right, right, the balls of our feet. Exactly, the balls so of your feet. Want to aim here and pull underneath in this action. Yeah. So I'll show from this side, pull. Oh, the wind. <laughs> <laughs> pull underneath yeah, here. And you want to put a lot of force into that pull down. Yeah. Okay. Next, we're going to do the B skips. So it's very similar to the A skips, but now you're actually bringing it up the, the knee and then coming out this way and then forcing it back down. Okay, so it's a little bit more of a different angle and now you're forcing it down. Okay, everything else is the same. Okay, we're going to see how I do because I haven't done B skips in about four years. <laughs> <laughs> I had one coach tell me to take the B skips out, so I did, but okay, we'll, we'll see, see how it goes. Let's okay, see how well you do. Right, nice and relaxed. Right. Okay. Good. And being aggressive with that, with that, uh, with the foot coming down. And again, being nice and relaxed with the upper body. Okay. Yeah, that felt pretty relaxed. Okay. Yeah. You don't want to be uh, tight, tense. You don't want to hold your breath. The more relaxed you are in the drills, the easier everything else becomes as your workout. Uh, Concludes. Yeah, so how you do your drills is how you're going to end up running because your subconscious will remember yeah. those movements. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Right. Reviews that I've done the past week, we talked a lot about different what it should look like when you start. So I wanted to um, get out here and put together uh, some of the, to show you what some of those starts look like. So one of them that uh, the coaches mentioned was the falling start. Um, now, coach just showed me his falling start and it's a lot faster and more dynamic than mine. I know, but I'll just give it a, a whirl and see what, it, what it'll look like. And then he'll show you his and we'll see how it's supposed to look. But okay, so I'm just standing at the starting line and I'm just gonna fall forward. And then what's, yeah. what are my arms doing then? As almost if, as if you're in the blocks, okay? okay so, so you're standing, yeah, you're standing like this and then it's just like, it's a powerful, it's a powerful explosion with the shoulders. Okay. And okay. then, and then your lead or your your drive leg is going to uh -huh. be the same thing, as if you're it's in the back pedal. All you're doing is just like. Pop. Okay. So it's a quick explosion with the hips. Okay, I'm going to give it a whirl. All right. So my falling start. Oh, I changed lanes. <laughs> okay. Exploding, okay, exploding that way. <laughs> I ended up in a different lane. How did you, okay, let's how did you see. Let's, let's see, see. Uh, coach's falling start. It's much better than mine. Let's see. Uh, this 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 is the fifty year old falling start. Oh, please! <laughs> you look fantastic. There you go. Yeah, much better. <laughs> okay. Okay. So then the other one is going to be. Um, a, a, we could do a three-point start. Three-point start, yeah. Okay. So on my three-point start, I want to. I usually want to make sure that my weight is shifted forward, yeah. So and then, um, so I'm kind of here, like, like I'm gonna push out of a block or something. Exactly. And then I have my opposite arm of my front foot down, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I take my other arm back about here. Okay. And one, think? and one of the big things is you want to make sure most of your, the pressure, is in the front. So you want it to be in the front foot, and also the hand that's down. So you want to have that pressure down there. Where you feel like most of your, your weight is on that front foot. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then once that go or whatever, then you're coming out strong. Your, the hips got to come out strong, explosive. The arms, have got to be explosive. And aggressive, just okay. like if you're in the blocks. Right. Okay. All right. So we'll go. Ready. Set. And as a beginner, they're not gonna. 
uh, be able to come out explosive like that. But what I like to do is we do like 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, what I call accelerations. And those are kind of good to be able to do this type of t technique with it, whether it's a three point stance or it's the, the fall. Uh, either way you can do it. But it's a good way just to kind of like practice the explosion with the shoulders and also, and also with the hips. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so, um, so we generally want to be at an angle when we're starting. Yeah, with Correct. Not, you're not starting here. So you want to be at an angle so that you're focusing on driving off of the balls of your feet with big arm splits, yeah? Correct. Okay, and then as you transition up and say I'm in the middle of my run, how should my body look? Am I, there's a coach right now that's going around saying that you should be in this squatty position when you're sprinting. Uh, no. <laughs> No. But um, it's, you know, my opinion and everything I've learned that you have to be a little, they call it running tall, but basically a little more open in the front. So what are your yeah. cues that you like to use for that? Well, what or I is like that to, what you, what are you envisioning well, after I, the transition period at the top speed? Yeah, once, once they come out of here and we do our drive phase, which I usually call between 20 to 25 meters of your drive phase if you're doing the 100 or 200, uh, after you get to that phase, now you're gonna go into the drive lift. So once you get past 25 meters or so, now you're going into that drive lift, you're kind of coming up now, and now you're kind of opening up here, standing somewhat tall, okay, right here, but still now you're, you're picking up the hips, you're being strong, the shoulders are, are turning over quickly, explosively from here, and then once you get now to uh, maybe about 65 to 70 meters now you're trying to maintain that that uh, that speed as much as you possibly can right okay. so I see people like uh, they get tired and they start dropping their arms yeah so if you're a beginner sprinter and you video yourself and then kind of pause that video in slow motion and you're looking like this when you're running maybe a lot of people put on the seatbelt I yeah. call it they yeah. run sideways like this you want to actually not be crossing your body right no. and be on the the outside and have that lift so yeah or other so here yeah. so everything uh, hands up to at least at least about i would you say your nose like your like, like your nose or uh -huh. almost the eyeball right here it shouldn't be too too high right not okay too but high. somewhere right in this level right here everything is always about angles the better you angles that you have in sprinting or throwing or jumping whatever it's going to be the better performance that you're going to have. So you want to really concentrate on those angles and eliminate unnecessary angles. Mm -hmm. Right. So here and here, and then the chest open. Chest open. Yeah. yeah. So like kind of uh, almost your shoulders back a little bit, but not up. Yeah. So I know we all know that when I uh, at the end of my 200, my shoulders slide up, and my sometimes my face will grimace. Sometimes at the end of my 400 yeah. too, which is something I'm working on right now, yeah. is staying down and relaxed. I have consciously have to keep my shoulders down and not from sliding up and getting tense. Yeah, and that's where that's you can work. using too much energy. Yes, yeah, using too much energy. Everything is starting to tighten up, you know, and you can use the arm drills down here, you know, and you're working this, and then you kind of can go faster, 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 and you can look at yourself inside the mirror. Great idea. And Running actually on. see yeah. if your shoulders are actually moving up or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So those are, th those could be do you a do drills that you can do. seated or standing usually? I like to do them standing. Uh, some people like to do them sitting too whichever your preference is, but I like them standing. Uh, and it's a really, really, really good drill. Sometimes I might even throw like a two and a half pounder or a five pounder just, mm -hmm. just to kind of strengthen it even a little I've bit more. That, yeah. You know, so those type of drills to help with the relaxation of your, of your shoulders are, are actually pretty good. Um, yeah, I like to do that drill sometimes with um, the amount of reps for the time I want to run. So if I run, want to run 56 seconds, I do 56 reps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just to strengthen my mental capacity as well. Yeah. And even, even, even if you want to go in, like in the pool, a pool is great to do that. Mm -hmm. So you can have one of those little floating vests or belts and you can plop yourself inside the pool and you can do that same technique inside the pool for like 15 seconds, 20 seconds, you know, 40 seconds, whatever you want. And you could like just do different sets on it. Mm -hmm. And that really helps too as, as far as the relaxation Yes, as well. that's great. And also it's really easy on your joints that way. Very easy on your joints, <laughs> for, yeah. Which is very important for beginner sprinters. Exactly, so. exactly. Yeah, so if you're just coming out 
as a beginner, you've never done it before, you want to try it, you know, the best thing is, is one, you've got to know your body, you got to know if you're strong enough to get on the track already, you know, if not, do the base training, you know, and that's, that's what you really want to do at first, base training, technique after. Right, so your feet are strong enough when you, we talked about how your feet have to be strong for when you put all that force on it. Yeah, right? yeah. So and the next a thing lot you, of strength training of the ankles and such. Yeah, all those different things and it's, hamstrings and quads. Oh, and, and core. You and, always and your core and your core. me on the core. <laughs> you got to do the core. All those different things. Yeah. And I've always tell you that all the pieces of the puzzle, right. you know, and right. If you, if you want to be the best you can be, you have to have all those pieces of the puzzle in order to uh, be successful, period. Well, I think you and I know a little bit about successful, so high five for that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, thank you so much for taking the time to come out today. And thank you, thank you guys for watching. And if you have any questions, definitely leave us a comment and we will do our best to answer. All right, aloha. Aloha. <laughs>